I'm Chip Bobbert, I'm a digital media engineer and emerging media technologist here at Duke University. I run the 3D print lab here at Duke University. I've done that since the idea emerged about two, two and a half years ago. Uh, since that time, we've expanded from one 3D printer sitting on my desk to approximately 35 3D printers today. There's a new phenomenon sort of happening where students are leaving and forming their own businesses. They're building their own products. They're, they're, they're working through rapid prototyping processes. They're, 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 you know, no longer is it, is it, you know, I'm going to go work at NASA. It's, I'm going to start my own company. So we're seeing amazing new products coming from some of our students. We have a student that's uh, started a company, uh, Biometrics, that's uh, making wearable technology. And uh, initially, they started their building a product here in our lab uh, and rapid prototyping through with the 3D printing process and small electronics that they have in their lab. Um, we have other student projects that have been very similar where they've built the housings for the project. We have uh, assistive devices that have been built here. Um, the sky's really the limit. We found very quickly that there were a lot of people that had been working in 3D for years and years and years creating uh, 3D objects that were necessary for their, their studies or concepts that they were exploring. And they never had a way to really make those objects with traditional machining. Uh, traditional machining requires years and years and years to master CNC technology. Tools and die makers may spend their entire career figuring out how to make some of the things that we can make now just with essentially the simplicity of file print. We went out and we looked at, at many other colleges toward their labs, uh, tried to really understand what was working for them and what wasn't working for them. And what we saw, there were a lot of organizations that went out and purchased a lot of 3D printers and put them in a space and tried to make them available. Um, we found that those universities were having a hard time keeping things working. We felt like anybody should be able to send a job over the network um, and have it queue up and deliver to a device. It was key to us to find some sort of middleware solution that could achieve that, that could help us uh, uh, eliminate the need for a software installed on a client machine for students that are bringing their own device, and to eliminate the need to have a desktop next to each machine that's supporting um, that and delivering data to that machine for the printing. Uh, and we stumbled across a product that we really like, 3D Printer OS. Um, no longer are students coming in with their laptop and we're having to update versions or figure out what's broken in that version that's not speaking with the firmware on a given machine and, and all of those problems. Uh, the student simply uploads their, their file to the cloud uh, and then they slice and execute. They build the, the instructions for the machine to make their part right there. All of that's rendered very quickly. Um, in that cloud service, and then it's delivered down to the machine. The student walks away. Uh, they don't even need to be in, a, in the lab. We actually have the cameras on the machines themselves that allow them to see the build plate, uh, figure out if anything's on there, and they, in a lot of instances, are even 3D printing objects from their dorm. Uh, we ended up achieving about 4,800 hours of printing. Uh, we did that across 2,500 print jobs, and we did that uh, meeting the needs of two, approximately 250 unique users. Our commitment is really to the desktop line of 3D printers at this point. Um, we don't like the idea of buying refrigerator sized units. We can't think of an example anywhere through the history of technology where larger, bigger systems won out over smaller, cheaper systems. So we're going to assume that that the, the market demand will be for, for systems that allow us to uh, uh, do more with less money. And indeed, the, the systems that we have parked here are actually doing what we see is is 99% as well as, as systems that cost many tens of thousands of dollars. So uh, we believe that this is the perfect point in considering diminishing returns. Some of the numbers that I, that I mentioned about you know with the uh, all of the hours and users and all of that tracking um, that was one of the the great uh, problems that our middleware solution that we use uh, the 3d printer os solves for us um, it does have a reporting mechanism inside of it which is great because obviously we're all accountable for the things we do in the course of, of whatever business where everybody has numbers to meet and um, has to explain and justify their mission and purpose uh, those reports have been essential uh, 
for convincing and showing people what we do and, and, and the, the segment that we serve. Uh, there's quite a few reports that are in there. I believe there's six reports now. It seems like every time we log into the system, there's more reports available for us, more data, and we, we love data. We love to slice that up and, and figure out what people are doing and how we can grow to meet their needs. We love making data-driven decisions. Thank you.